Hello and welcome to part one. We're, um, we're going to be actually creating a network in Cisco's Packet Tracer and we'll be following it right through from the very early stages right through to the end uh, product. What does the end product look like? Okay, it looks like that. Good grief, I know you're saying, oh, you've got to be kidding, we can't possibly do that. Uh, yeah, you can. It's actually not that difficult. It looks really complicated, but we'll actually be going through it step by step. We'll do it a little bit at a time. We'll start with some, some switches over here, and we'll sort of build our way up uh, until we get to the routing and doing the VPN stuff over here, and eventually the voice, the telephony stuff. But we'll start in small steps. We'll get that out of the way. Let's just bring a blank canvas over into my screen here. What I'm going to do is first up, just configure some switches, and we're going to do some fairly basic stuff here, so nothing, nothing too complicated. I've just got a 2950 switch here, but really you could use the 2960s as well. Uh, it really doesn't matter. We'll, we'll, in fact, we'll stick with the 2960. What we're going to do is we're actually going to go, uh, but just before we get started, there's really nothing you can do in the physical side of things here. There's no modules you can add in, anything like that. Everything that we're going to do is really going to be done on the command line. Um, let's just get started. Uh, first up, you'll be you'll be shown all the stuff at the start. This is just the the boot. It, it'll tell you the version number, a little bit of other information there that uh, you know is mildly interesting. We'll get into a little bit of that a little bit later in the series. For now, let's just do some really basic um, configuration, if you like, of the switch. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to copy this configuration into multiple switches, save us having to do you know, the same thing over and over again. First up, let's go into Enable Mode. Um, we can tap that out, usually I just press E and just tap it out and go into Enable Mode. We can't really do anything from this mode, there are a few things that we can do. If we have a look at what's available to us, there are a few commands available. We actually can't do any configuration at this stage. To do that, we need to go into the configuration terminal, or config T as I call it. Once we're in there, we can actually start doing a few things. For example, let's set host name is probably a good place to start, and uh, let's call it Steve. And you'll notice straight away that over here, uh, our prompt has changed to whatever you've just called the switch. From there, let's then say make a banner, a message of the day banner. This can be a little bit tricky. It has a funny thing, it sort of says, um, if I put a question mark here, it says, okay, uh, C, banner text C, where C is the delimiting character. What they mean by that is that the C will be the start and the end of the sentence. I don't like using C because the minute you type C in your banner, of course, it's going to stop. So I try to use a character that's definitely not going to be in my sentence, for example, the plus sign. Hit enter, and then it just says, okay, enter your text. What are you going to put in there? Well, no unauthorized access. And we'll finish it off. Done. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to put a password onto this, into the config mode. Um, we'll have a look at setting the line uh, consoles and the telnet lines and that sort of things a bit later. For now what I want to do is actually make a password so that I can't get into this configuration mode. And to do that, there's a couple of ways we can do it. It's enable. I'll put the question mark there, I've actually got a, a choice there of password or secret. The password is for the older legacy stuff. We don't really use it anymore. It's, it's not encrypted or hashed or anything like that. Um, we tend to use the secret, uh, and I'll just put Cisco. I tend to use that for everything. Uh, easy to remember that way. The other thing I like to do fairly early on is you do put this command in there. No IP domain lookup. It stops the really annoying thing. If you do a, a, a mistype somewhere along the line, it'll go off and try and find a domain server somewhere. It's particularly annoying because there's no way out of it and it just hangs there for a minute or so. Uh, very frustrating. The other thing I like to do is, uh, well, because we're going to be managing these things, let's put a, an IP address on it. Because it's a switch, we can't put an IP address on the actual switch ports, but we can put it to the switch as a whole. And we do that uh, using a funny thing called um, a VLAN, in fact, it'll be VLAN 1. Um, you can put a number of different VLANs, but let's stick with VLAN 1. If we go into that, you'll notice that the prompt changes to IF, config IF. It shows that we're actually in an interface. Well, not really, it's actually a, just like a virtual interface, it doesn't really exist. 
Once we're in there, we can actually put an IP address in there, something like uh, 192.168.0.100, say. Subnet mask. Yeah. Help if I can actually type. Try that again. Uh, and then no shutdown. That'll actually bring that interface up. You notice there it's come up straight away with the message. Exit out of that back to config mode. Next thing I'm going to do is put a default gateway in there. If we want to manage it from outside the subnet, we need a default gateway. We haven't got one yet, um, but we'll put one there just ready for it. Don't need the subnet mask for this. You can just put the IP default gateway straight in. The other thing I'm going to do is put in uh, this command. It's service password encryption. Now what that does is that it means that if I do a, um, yeah, let's just do a do show run here. The minute I do the do show run, you notice straight up the top here, uh, everything gets, even if I've just got a standard old password, this one's actually hashed anyway. But if I go into the console, which we'll do a little bit later on, um, if I, even if I put it in plain text, it will hash it. Um, it means that anyone looking over my shoulder or anything like that, if they're doing this, they, they can't actually see what the password is going to be. It's just going to be gobbledygook. Let's quit out of that. Uh, finally, last thing we'll do in this, this short piece here is actually save the running configuration to the startup configuration. There's a couple of ways of doing that. Um, we can do it from in here, in fact, flakes it back to where we were. A uh, couple of ways of doing it. You can go copy running config to the startup config. You can do it that. Um, you can do copy run start. That works okay as well. Or you can go WR right. And it does the same thing. Um, that's all we're going to do at the moment. Next we're going to connect a couple of switches together and have a look at the line uh, console and the telnet lines.